Um, so the focus really of what I want to discuss, I mean, Andrea just mentioned some of the issues about technology and, and about the kind of the way they're going to use the seminar program as a way of thinking about the technologies that you may purchase. Um, and I guess some of the things I'll talk about are maybe about, about not seeing the technology as being the driver uh, for many of these initiatives. So a couple of the projects that I'll talk about have used technology, have used have media technology in particular, but have looked to perhaps think about how we can lower the threshold of involvement in these technologies and actually ensure that people can actually get involved in finding voice and having a, a say and contribute in um, media content without necessarily having technological capacity or, or skill sets. So that's kind of some of the areas that we'll talk about. If you use Twitter, if you want to interact, then please share. There's at DG McGilvery um, and we can have a conversation beyond uh, the seminar, uh, beyond the discussion that I know we're going to have anyway. So. Um, I'll just get straight into it. So I guess I wanted to just to, to situate some of the sort of discussions about the digital, I think, that are relevant to what I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, and these these are broadly around about the role of digital and social media in particular. Um, so obviously there's been a lot of literature that many of you will be aware of that, that provides a, suggests that digital and social media can be really profitable, can be really quite liberating, can, can help people to, for example, create content rather than simply consume that content. And I guess these are the sorts of arguments that we see there, those that are on the screen. But that there's an empowerment dimension, that we can be creative, we can create using the, the devices that we have in our pockets, for example. But perhaps there's an opportunity to mobilize and to empower people um, to come together. Lots of hopes and wishes politically and otherwise round about the potential role that digital and social media platforms may play. Um, that we can contest kind of knowledge claims and authority claims in particular uh, through perhaps reducing the kind of gap between those that are in power and those that don't have power. Um, and also, I think as Gauntlet talks about here, that there's an opportunity to potentially get away from a kind of sit back and be told culture towards something of more making and doing. And I really like this idea of making and doing. And it's something you'll see in some of the projects that I've been involved in that that, that actually the participants are involved in making and creating and that's something that, that can help them think through issues around about digital literacies that I'm gonna, gonna come to as well. But of course, within that kind of hope and aspiration, we've also seen some, some concerns quite rightly around about perhaps the, the more negative outcomes of, of a turn to digital, if you like. So the issues of risk and privacy and rights agendas that, we'll, that we're seeing more and more definitely in the UK and further afield. Um, kind of issues around skills and competencies and who has access to those and whether people are actually prepared to be able to make the most of the digital environments that they now inhabit. Um, the availability of infrastructure, so that may be about cost, but that may also be about the tools themselves and their availability and affordance um, and whether that actually enables the majority to participate in this in this space or whether, again, that's a, 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 an exclusive kind of domain that's created around about the use of digital. Um, and, and again, I'm particularly interested in some of the, the sort of access issues, not, not in terms of whether people necessarily have devices or, or, the, or the tools, but whether they actually um, are, have the skills and the competence and the broader awareness of being able to use these tools effectively to achieve what they wish to achieve. So kind of Gauntlet and Willig and et al here to sort of talk about that kind of issue and, and, and particularly about the kind of idea of the habitus of young people, which perhaps means that not everyone necessarily has the same access to the digital space and to use that digital space effectively, whether that's for political purposes, for education purposes, or in kind of a leisure context in terms of how people can make use of that. And I'll, I'll come back to that a little bit later as I, as I chat through the, 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 the workshop to, to sort of emphasize where some of the interests of my projects have been. So that kind of just tries to situate a little bit the, the, the context within which I'm going to talk. And, and there's lots of discussion here we can, we can come back to, I think. Um, Again, my interest in, in, in terms of the background to this particular space is I've been involved in two particularly large projects, but that called, one called Citizen Relay, deliberately with the hashtag, and that, that will be evident in a couple of the projects that, that I've run before, uh, and Digital Commonwealth, which I'm going to talk about um, mostly during this presentation. Um, and I guess, as I said in the introduction, I'm quite intrigued about the kind of affordances of digital and social media. What's permitted, what's perhaps, perhaps restricted um, within that space? Um, and again, I'm not necessarily interested in it just from a technological point of view, but more about how the, the sort of practices dimension, how people use the technology, what it means for the way that they interact, 
uh, and can do it, but also the sorts of things they feel uncomfortable doing within that space. Um, particularly interested for the projects I'm going to talk about around about how learners of all sorts, and that's not just learners in school environments or educational environments, but more broadly community learners and that kind of idea of a, of a, of a lifelong learning a culture. Um, also broader community members in some of the projects you're going to see me talking about, uh, whether this uh, access and use is evenly experienced or, or unevenly experienced. And, and, and again, that's, that's very much core to, to the way we're trying to explore some of the projects that I've been involved in. But broadly, from a research perspective, this is, this is Pinkett, Al have talked about digital ethnography, from the idea that actually we can't not be interested in these things from a research perspective because of the extent to which the whole um, context is, is, as they describe, co-constituted and entangled with digital technology. Um, so I guess what my projects have tried to do is try and explore that and get in, in, if you like, in depth and with those that are using the technologies just to understand just what that means within their, within their lives. And the, this uh, final sort of background context for why I'm interested in this was described, I think, again, in the opening bio, which is around about an interest in both digital cultures and sort of major sports events and the way in which media work around about those events in particular. And although this seems a bit of a, a dichotomy, um, there is this sense that around about major sports events, that there is a debate about media and who has voice within that. And, and I guess I just quickly tried to show this on the, on the slide around about the, the kind of way that traditional media had, had tended to work and broadcast media in particular around about these major sports events on the top half of that, of this, of this slide, where you have kind of a, a, a rights owning media that pay, pay handsomely for rights to, sh to participate in, in covering uh, large sport events, the Olympic Games, the World Cup, lots of others. The, the involvement of sponsors and quite strict media guidelines mean that actually the organizers have quite a lot of control over the way that these events are communicated, how they are how they come across to us as, as the watching public, uh, as we particularly used to be, but even, even to an extent, the way that we interact through other uh, media and that online media too now. I guess I'm interested in the bottom part in, in terms of just what's possible and in, in terms of a shifting environment around the media uh, around these events. Um, so there's, for the last 20 years or 15 to 20 years, there's been the development of an, of an unaccredited media um, of an independent media to an extent who are interested in covering these games and these events, these large events, um, and also a, a sort of growing citizen and community media who perhaps have a particular agenda in the host environment and, and wish to, to have a, a very different voice coming through than that that may come through the, the official media. Um, so because of my interest in these things, then a couple of the projects I'm going to talk about really these, these device or practice research projects have tried to kind of explore to what extent people could potentially have more involvement through using the, the media and the devices that they have in their pockets and, and some of the research that's now generated as a result of that. So, so just one of the projects I I'd like to contextualize the discussion in. So um, I'm happy afterwards to talk about the, this broader perspective that I've laid out, but I'm going to go in deep in a couple of projects just to give you a, an insight into what, what I'm interested in, but also how these link to the broader issues about, about digital media and social media uh, in particular. 